This is the art of Aikido, one of the most beautiful and unique of the martial arts of Japan. Aikido is a martial art and a form of self-defense, but it's much more. It's a philosophy, a way of moving, and a way of life. Hello, I'm Foster Gamble, and together in this program we'll explore Aikido, the way of harmony. Aikido. Together these characters translate as the way of harmony with the spirit of the universe. Harmony is a central concept to the philosophy of Aikido. Harmony between mind and body, between thought and action. Even in terms of practical self-defense, this principle of harmony applies. The techniques of Aikido work not by resisting the force of an attack, but by blending with it and bringing it under control. Though Aikido is one of the youngest of the martial arts of Japan, scarcely 40 years old, its roots stretch far into the past, back to the feudal era of Japan, a time of continual civil war, the time of the samurai. These centuries of conflict gave rise to a phenomenal number of martial arts. As these literally thousands of fighting arts evolved, so evolved the guiding principles of Budo, the way of the warrior. The philosophy of Budo transformed the martial arts of Japan and gave them a new dimension. In the tradition of Budo, the mastery of technique became valued not as an end in itself, but as a step toward the mastery of one's own spirit. The samurai era came to its turbulent end in the late 19th century. A modern Japan began to emerge, and with it emerged a very remarkable man. His name was Morihei Ueshiba. The story of Aikido is the story of his life. Born about 1883, the young Ueshiba began studying the martial arts in order to protect his family from the political violence which coursed through Japan at the end of the feudal era. By his 20s, he was entering national competitions, challenging and defeating some of the greatest martial arts masters of his day, and gaining fame throughout Japan for his skill and courage. However, at the peak of his career, an undefeated champion, he became disillusioned with competition. For Ueshiba, winning at another's expense was no longer enough. He turned inward and spent seven years in meditation and training, trying to achieve a much more difficult victory, winning over the discord within himself. While time has blurred exact dates and details, the story of the beginning of Aikido is the stuff of legend. In 1925, while on a mountaintop retreat, Ueshiba was challenged by a visiting martial artist, a sword master. They fought a duel. But this time, perhaps because of his meditations, Ueshiba chose not to fight back. Instead, each time his opponent's sword descended, Ueshiba was simply not there. Exhausted, his opponent was forced to yield. In trying to defeat Ueshiba, he had defeated himself. For Ueshiba, this was a profound experience. As he describes in his memoirs, at that moment, I was enlightened. I realized that the true Budo is not felling the opponent by force, but that the source of Budo is love the spirit of loving protection for all beings. Inspired by this revelation, Ueshiba began his life's work, the development of a new martial art, one based not on winning or domination, but on the spirit of loving protection. He became known as O-sensei, which translates as great teacher, and spent the next 30 years developing and refining the techniques that now comprise the art of Aikido. The fame of the new form of Budo spread rapidly by
by word of mouth and caused quite a sensation in Japan. Many of O-sensei's best students were already masters of other martial arts who came as skeptics and stayed on as students. The dedication of these early students and the intensity of their training produced an environment in which the art of Aikido grew and flourished. The radical integration of martial arts and nonviolence and the beauty of Aikido's movements attracted not only martial artists, but a broad spectrum of students that included government ministers, actors, and dancers. The war years all but halted the growth of Aikido, and during this time, O-sensei continued his own training and study. He began teaching publicly again in the late 1940s. During the post-war years, Aikido once again captured the imagination of the Japanese people. Classes were again filled with students, and for the next two decades, Ueshiba traveled extensively, giving demonstrations and spreading his art not only throughout Japan, but throughout the world. Aikido was O-sensei's life, and he taught and trained into his 80s. As this rare film footage shows, he retained his grace and mastery of technique to the end of his years. He died in 1969 at the age of 85. Today, Aikido is practiced worldwide by over one million people and its system of techniques is a living, growing body of knowledge that continues to evolve. While there are literally thousands of individual techniques in Aikido, they are all based on one central concept, the concept of blending. Blending sets Aikido apart from other martial arts, and no understanding of Aikido would be complete without an understanding of blending. Simply put, blending is entering and turning. Rather than meeting an attack head on, the student learns to blend with the incoming force. In this technique, the Aikido student absorbs the main force of the attack, enters her opponent's space, and redirects the force of the attack, bringing the attacker under control. The day-to-day -day training in Aikido is based on working closely with a partner in a regular exchange of the roles of attacker and defender. This hands-on attack training teaches the students both how to throw and how to fall correctly and without injury. Traditional Japanese weapons, the sword and the staff, are an integral part of the Aikido training. While preserving ancient samurai traditions of swordsmanship and weapons mastery, they are also exacting tools that teach balance, coordination, and concentration. The training in the basic techniques reaches its culmination in the exercise of randori, or group attack. In this demanding exercise, no two of which are ever the same, all of the aspects of the Aikido training are called into play, and individual techniques are transformed into spontaneous action. The essence of Aikido is movement. As with dance, this essence cannot be fully expressed in words. The art form comes to life in the movement of its artists. To help catch a glimpse into the heart of Aikido, we've brought together 
four of the highest ranking Aikido masters in the United States. They have each attained the rank of fifth degree black belt and are all actively involved in teaching Aikido through a network of schools in Northern California. They all share a common love for Aikido, but each has his own approach and insights into the art. I started Aikido about 1960. Uh, previous to that, I had been in other martial arts. Uh, but what attracted me to the uh, Aikido was they were uh, speaking about mind-body harmony. And uh, I was interested in that aspect. I couldn't quite put my finger on that aspect in the arts I had been into. Uh, Aikido seemed to already be majoring in that, and that caught my attention and, and drew me into it like a magnet. The techniques of Aikido and your partners in Aikido are a good feedback mechanism. You can repeat a technique with your partner many times in a row and tell where you're coming from by how the technique works. It's a feedback machine, a feedback mechanism, and a live one. Aikido can facilitate the energy awareness because we can set up the problem and the response and we can repeat that over and over again. It's like a stage. You set up a particular attack and you know from experience what the most natural defenses are and so then you watch people to see if they are allowing this naturalness to happen so we're we're using a tangible form aikido and movement to express in a sense intangible things uh, somebody may be tight and linear uh, but there'd be another level that's suddenly well-rounded and and more accepting and we could see it in the moves so we're, I was able to begin to uh, uh, utilize the techniques and the philosophy, not separate, not do the techniques over on one side, have the philosophy over on the other, but that they were more than intertwined. They were, they were completely one laid over the other, laid over the other. And. Group attack is a more advanced form of training. There is a certain level one-on-one -on -one but it's increased one on two, one on three. When I have a person moving in on me, I can look and study their movement and try to respond quickly to bring us together in a way that I'll win out, I'll throw. It's okay, but there's another level where we are both dancers on the same turntable, both turned at the same time. We respond to each other equally. That's the level I'm interested in. Aikido is like the creation. It's always unfolding. New things are always being brought up and out. It cannot 